Hey everyone, welcome back to the Mama Genius Hub podcast. Today is a little bit special. I actually leave for Tanzania in a couple hours. But what I really want to talk about is what happens when we decide to choose to do something big. Welcome to Mama Genius Hub podcast, where we support moms with big dreams from entrepreneurship to personal aspirations. I'm your host, Michelle DeKaiser, and I'm here to help you unlock your potential in all areas of life. Join us as we explore strategies for thriving in motherhood while pursuing the dreams, the key to actually unlocking your genius. Subscribe now and embark on a journey to realize your fullest potential. So for me, going to Tanzania has been this whole process of fundraising and doing all these things and not even sure if we were going to go or not, right? When we decide to do these things and, and get out of our head, things start to happen. For instance right before our leader, Jackie Bailey, came up with the idea of let's do 20 days to promote Tanzania and do these things so we can fundraise just a bit more, right? At the beginning of it, I had this urge from another mentor and decided that it'd be a good idea to do a virtual summit as a culmination to these 20 days. However, I got inside my head thinking, no, we can't do that. Yet I pushed through that and then brought it to the team. They're like, yeah, I think we can do this. And so... On 4th of July, we're creating a landing page, going back and forth, figuring out what's the wording. That's a Thursday. By the following Wednesday, we actually had 15 speakers ready to speak who had donated to the project. Insane, right? And then as we we get to the actual, what we named the Global Influencers Initiative, because this is an initiative about us putting our hats out there, about being global, about doing these things. And the culmination was this project is this project in Tanzania. But as we start to put this out there and getting participants from it, Facebook even decided, nope, you can't do this. Every post that had that link in it was marked spam. Now I was getting a little panicky thinking we're not gonna get many participants but because it was one track. We had quite a few participants in, in the room all day long. And one of the key speakers was um, Mazadi who talks about how to change your frequency change your frequency, change your life. I was able to listen to his talk, but that was the one part of the day where I had to go to my daughter's performance. So, But one of our team members, Justine, was able to arrange a private session with him yesterday talking about our frequencies, right? And one of the things that was pointed out to me was how my upper body pours into others. And I even hunch over when, when I'm doing this. I'll lean in this and, and hunch over when I'm talking to clients or we start to notice these patterns, he helped release that a bit. My son was also in the room, part of the team. So we had the whole team in there and he was part of the team. It was nice to have, have this. He also says that I was casting a net around him and I need to let him feel a little bit freer and not so suffocating. But what I start to, to realize is when we put these big projects on and these big things, we get in our heads and we think we can't do it. Now, the key is we probably can't do it alone, but when we put that idea out to others, we start to get the support needed to make that project happen. And so, yes, we were about to leave for Tanzania. Tickets for this were bought around June 10th, and it's July 20th. Right now, we're leaving on the 23rd. So we didn't even know for a fact until the plane tickets were, were bought that we were actually going. So things have been moving quickly. But what I want to take a moment now is to apply this to you And those ideas that are coming in your mind, because again, this is all pre-travel, my ideas of what's going on. I'm going to do a post one as well. But in this pre one, I really want to think about the concept when you catch yourself having these ideas and then information starts disseminating to you. So you you might start thinking, seeing a video that, that you hadn't expected. Your mind might tell you, I already know that, or I can't do that. One of those two things usually happens when we're scared or we're not sure what's going to happen. And so what I want to challenge you to do, especially when the, I know this already comes up, because what happens when we do that is it's our subconscious telling us, oh, we can just disregard that. But I want you to ask this question. If that information is being presented into you as you're coming up with this big idea, trying to do something, the question is not, do you already know what it is, but are you actually doing it? Are you implementing that idea right now. Because a lot of times it's something that our subconscious mind said, oh, we don't need to worry about that. 
But because we put this big idea into motion, it's now time to focus on those things. And the other thing for me was I can't do this. It's not possible. There's not enough time. All the reasons come into play of what you're doing, right? Instead of I can't do it, how can this happen? It happened because I took the idea and brought it to the team. And as a team, we were able to do it. Alone, I probably couldn't have found 15 speakers in less a week, but together we each found four or five. That was doable as a team. So when we have these big ideas, we want to write these things down. And as we get to those points where the resistance starts to come in saying, I can't do this. Ask yourself, how can this happen? Or when you get presented with something, a YouTube video or a Facebook feed, or you're in a masterclass and that idea connects to your big idea, but your body says, I already know this. Ask yourself, am I implementing this? Because I'm excited about the Tanzania project. I'm excited to go, but it's also all those nerves of packing and doing all those things that happen when we travel, right? We can take the idea of traveling and all the steps it takes us to get a big idea out into place, right? We can associate those two together, all the steps of getting to, to the plane, all the things we need to get into place. The same thing happens when we have those big ideas. We need to lay those steps out. However, they can feel overwhelming. They can feel scary. And I guarantee I still feel a little bit uneasy about all the things in front of me. But after yesterday's session, a lot more release and able to get these things. And what I finally did was I let my husband help me with my packing. He's very organized. He's better with laying out what's going to fit. And when I finally accepted that help, I am, it's noon right now and, and I haven't really packed anything this morning, but I'm about 90% packed. And so it's just a few little odds and ends that, that, that need to put together. But when we release what needs to get done, things start to happen. Normally about this time, I'd be freaking out right now. Nothing's done. But when we put things into place and we focus on those two things, ask yourself, am I implementing that? Knowledge, that's what Tony Robbins always tells us, it's potential until we take those actions that go with it, especially when you put that big idea out there. And number two, when the resistance come up and he says, I can't do that, just reframe that. It's, what is the first step? How can I make that happen? Just like the Global Influencers Initiative, it was that first step of bringing the idea to other people. I was like, nope, we can't do this. We raised about $2,500 from just that global initiatives between the speaker fees, between the attendees, between VIP packages, all together in that one day because I said, we can do this. How can we do this? I can't do it, couldn't do it alone. But once I brought to the team, it was something that was able to happen. The question is, do you have to do this alone? No. Let the ideas start to flow and see what comes up and focus on those two ideas. This is part one. We're going to um, have another one when I'm back from Tanzania. I'll be doing more lives and things throughout Tanzania, but I'm going to do a two-parter to this when we come back and talking about everything that comes together, the culmination of, of things and the changes that happen. Honestly, I, I don't know the structure of things of what, exactly what we're doing. All I know, I'm going on faith and belief and just love that we're going to be out there to serve. This mission is going to take us to where we need. Attention, mompreneurs. Do you feel like you're constantly juggling the responsibilities without a moment to yourself? It's time to pause and reflect with our Mama Genius Quiz. Tailored for busy mamas like you, this quiz will help you identify what's blocking your path and inspire you to harness your unique strengths, transform how you manage life and business, find your rhythm, and ignite your joy. Visit mamageniushub.com today to discover your mama genius. And that's mamageniushub.com. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to part two of the Mama Genius Hub podcast. I'm almost forgetting the things that, that I had said before this trip. I love the focus and, and the great reminder of the two things from there about really when you say, I know something, asking that question of, am I implementing this? And then coming back to the idea of when the resistance come up, how can we do this? And that also leads me into this post. I wasn't even quite sure what I was going to say, but the big focus I want to say are focusing on the lessons 
learned rather than what it feels like what happened to you. For instance, from the start of the trip, we had a picture on the Facebook group of us walking on the plankway with our luggage. We did not see those luggages for five days. All of our luggage was gone. And my son kept looking at me like, why are you upset? What, what, why is it bothering you? And I had to keep sitting with these questions of, of what do I really need? We were able to get the basics that we needed here and there. We borrowed some stuff and, and it all worked out. We, we were able to have clothes for those five days. Liam was even able to get custom-made pants right then and there. They had a tailor sitting by the stand with a sewing machine to make it fit him better. It was really quick and we didn't have much time to shop, but we were still able to make it happen. And so I started to look at this trip about what are the lessons that I'm getting from these things? Life doesn't happen to us. It happens for us. And so I'm looking at what is it that I really need to go through each day. It really brought down to simplify. Right now, as we speak, I have this bracelet in front of me, which I'm wearing every day as a reminder. It's pull it, pull it, which in Tanzania is basically to slow down, to, to remember things go slow and just move at a different pace. And for us, we're having to be on time and, and do all these things. We start to slow down with this pole, pole. And it was a reminder, even Liam would at a time say to me, mom, pole, pole, why, why are you like stressing? Why are you doing these things? And it's a good reminder to bring ourselves back down to what really is important. I think that is the true lesson that I received from Tanzania. And as I look at all the people that we met, the, the faces, it was just amazing to see the smiles and just the pace and the way things were done differently. And not, not in a way that made me go, I might want to do things that way because we look at that new perspective. Whenever we're doing these things, it's really just about that perspective change because we get stuck in these patterns and we don't know why we feel anxious or stressed and we, and we keep doing more. But when we have these pattern interrupts, we can start to say, oh, it's because I'm not looking at, at it this way. Looking at situations that were hard because travel is tiring. It's hard. It puts a toll on your body, puts a toll on you mentally. And all those challenges that come with it. But at the same time, what can you learn? And what kind of person are you when put forth with those challenges, right? Are you, so for instance, even on the plane on the way there, I was so worried about my 13 year old, how he would do with a long flight and stuff. At one point I fell asleep and woke up to see him eating something. I panicked thinking I had missed breakfast. And that was my one chance of getting breakfast and just in that state of grogginess and that sleep, you're like, what's going on? And then the anger just starts to surface. And I'm like, you know, he does his responses. Like he just gently got to steward the stewardess and, and put food in front of me. It was actually just a snack. It wasn't even breakfast yet. When we're in those states of duress, when, when our body is just not quite sure what's going on, functioning, what can we do? And I was thankful and grateful for that. On the way home, I was able to do the reverse where he slept more and I was able to make sure food was in front of him. But it's having that symbiosis relationship where you're there to help each other and not necessarily say me, me. I learned that a lot through this trip and the welcoming that we got from so many of the different groups. We worked in four different schools. We had one assembly where 750 kids came to hear us. It was amazing to see each one of them carry a chair from their classroom and line them up perfectly in this like almost U square. It was like a U, but it was almost squarish. And we were just front and it was all outside. Um, but to see how, how they could coordinate all of that so quickly, I, I'm not sure <laughs> if that would work in the schools that, that, that I'd work in so close. But again, we never tried that. But it was just to see how things function just a little bit different, how they were able to organize different things. And um, the, that first school that we went, that school that we went to was some of her kids. The youngest kid there was 14. When Liam got up to share that he was a published author in the Parenting Owner's Manual, they were asked how old they thought he was. It ranged mostly from 16 to 20. When they found out he was 13, they actually start laughing because they're like so shocked at how young he was. And so I feel like that was an inspiration as well as when we start to put ourselves out there and, and show who we are and the things that we do. He was so nervous. He was like, how do I get in front of these many people? How do I say that? 
And he also, he, he was working on Swahili, so he was able to introduce his, his himself in Swahili. So that was something I think that also made them chuckle a little bit too. But again, it was, it's all those pieces of what, how can we take what's in front of us and realize it's not necessarily a good or bad thing, but asking the question, what is the lesson in here for me? What is it that I am either triggered by? What do I need to work on? Why is this presented in front of me? And what can I do about it differently? And putting a different perspective in place. There was also another opportunity where we actually went to a woman's entrepreneur group. Their name is Rise and Shine. And what they do is they gather weekly and have dues that they pay in every week. They allow women to borrow that money to help with their businesses. And then the women will pay it back with interest. What a great way to support each other. But the, when we got off, they were singing and dancing. Some of us were like almost half asleep from this long bus ride. That we were just so in awe of the energy and vitality that came from this group. They were such an inspiration for us. We were thinking we're going to inspire them. But it's about us collecting community, meeting together, and how can we support each other in lifting each other up and realizing how similar we are in our dreams and our hopes. And it was just so beautiful to hear some of their dreams and the things that they want to do and how we can start to collaborate and help to facilitate connections between us. Mm. Another group was the Pink Ladies brought breast cancer awareness to the area of Arusha. And she will actually, she sets up yearly a way for women to be tested because a lot of them didn't know. And then she supports women who find out that they have cancer. Some of our teams are able to gather supplies and bring some of the bras with paddings and, and things that they might need, some head coverings, things, all kinds of things that were to help support them. And just the energy that we got from them. Actually, before we got there, I was feeling a little bit in my head, feeling like, am, am I really helping here? What, what is my purpose here? And as soon as I start to hear their stories of, of the things that they've been through and the things that they're changing. And one of them is, is directly on my page. And I even had her at first, I was just so mesmerized by her story. I wasn't even recording her, that I pulled her aside and asked her, can we re-record that outside of my phone? I want to hear it one more time. And that's what I posted because sometimes we need that message more than once to get outside of our heads. We can see what others are going through and put things again, that new perspective shift. So to, in post Tanzania, we're not looking at what can we learn from a situation and change the perspective of it. When we see how others do things we're like, oh, that makes so much more sense in the way I've been doing it. And it's just those little tweaks that we keep moving along that propels us forward. The key though, is in listening to your gut to see, does that work for me? But when your gut is pushing you forward, and you're telling yourself, I already know that. That's when you start to ask yourself, am I implementing it? What lesson do I learn from this? Why is this triggering me? Because your gut is pushing you forward in whatever your purpose, mission, however you want to word it is. Whether it's having a better relationship with your kids or the, what you want to do with yourself, having a better relationship with yourself, feeling that worthiness of who you are and the beauty of who you are. And I think that's the biggest perspective change that I got. Being able to watch my son just flourish and really see himself come out as well was just enlightening. We were in the Norngor crater on safari and I had this vision. So I want you to think about what your visions are. I had this vision of moms and teenage kids coming together on trips like this to circle together and, and learn from each other, but then to also meet other moms and, and kids of whatever country it's in. And how can we combine tourism and helping each other together versus just let me go see wh what I can see around the world. But how can we really culminate? For me, it's always been, how can I experience the culture more? How can I make more community and connection with those? And I feel like this would be a great way from that post without me even saying anything, when I posted about the creator, someone's like, how can I bring my daughters on a trip like this? And then I got someone else 
who had a vision of us in the rainforest together, had no idea any of this was in my head. As we put our visions out there, the universe is working for us to figure out how that's going to happen. I have no idea how this will happen or what it will be. I'm saying it right now on this episode of podcast, a year from now, this could mean so many different things, but just like the pre and post of Tanzania, until we start putting our visions out there and seeing where they lead, we're, we're, we're going to feel that of stuckness or that emptiness of, of not being able to move forward. If you feel that calling, that nudge to do something, whatever that something is, let's start naming it together. So I'd love in the comments to start hearing some of your visions and then asking yourself the questions of, am I doing that right now? Am I taking the next step forward? What can I learn from this? And with that, I'm going to leave you for today with the takeaway of those questions. Let's go through them one more time. Number one, if you see something and your mind says, I know, ask yourself, am I doing it? And then number two, when that resistance come in, how can you ask yourself, how can I do that? And then that was from part one. And in part two, we're looking at what can we learn from the things that are put in front of us? A lot of times we feel like all those negative things, our life is, this stuff is happening to me, but it's happening for you. And so you start asking, what am I supposed to learn from these situations? And then how can I have that perspective change? How does, so number three, sorry, is how to have those perspective changes. How do I take that learning and now change my perspective a bit, or even using that perspective change from how others do things differently, whether it's a different country or a podcast or something you heard and gives you that, that little incremental change, how you can do it. And that leads us into number five, when we're really thinking about our vision and putting that out there, I'd love for you to start writing down those visions and we can start applying those questions to that vision to make sure these visions are happening and putting those and sharing them in community so we can help create more of these visions together. Because as I was saying, my vision of Orangora, two other people are already involved in that. The more we say it out loud, the more we put things out there, the connections start to come together because we're not meant to do these visions alone. At times it feels like it, but we're meant to find the people who are supposed to help support those visions. And we can't do those if we don't lay them out. Thank you so much. I am so grateful for those of you that help support the Tanzania um, project. It is still a continuous project and they're planning on trips for the next four years, maybe even more. I just can't thank you enough for all your support. It's been such a wonderful ride coming back from this first trip. I feel this culmination of gratitude and joy to each and every one of you. The more we listen to these visions, the better we make this world. Thank you for tuning into the Mama Genius Hub podcast. Thank you for joining us in today's episode of the Mama Genius Hub podcast. If you found value in our conversation, please share this episode with another mama who might benefit. Sharing helps us build a supportive community and reach out to more mamas like you. After all, it's more fun when we do motherhood together. Until next time, stay motivated and continue to pursue your dreams as you shine in your genius.